it is still a sex magic ritual that you just bound yourself to a negative entity and a negative energy where you just affirm you got to pay for sex or you got to get paid to perform a sex act, which is a lower level animalistic form of sex act ritual because you get to deal with more Luciferian energies. You get to deal with a more of a negative or what they call demonic forces, which deal with all types of fetishes and all types of buying and exchanging that has nothing to do with love and raising the vibrational consciousness of the woman's vagina or the man's penis or raising or shaking up the vibration in that man's nuts and elevating the consciousness of his sperm or even shifting the consciousness of his sperm. When we deal with prostitution and porn acts, that is a sex magic ritual that is so dark and is so deep and is so destructive. The magnetic pull on it is so heavy that it pulls you deeper and deeper and deeper in. And the more you take it, the more you want it. And the more you do one sex act, then you want another. The more you see, you know, a man fucking a woman in the face and ejaculating all over her face, then you want to see him fuck an ass. Then you want to see two men fucking ass. Then you want to see him put a baseball bat up his ass. And how many dicks can he take at one time? See, it's the, it never ends. Oh, what you got to say also? <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, with, with what you're saying, I want to uh, when you get, when you get to that thought, I want to lay uh, give you seven uh, basic principles or laws that you can come back to each one. Yes. Uh, that if people uh, understand these laws and they put them into practice, it will allow them to have that balance. Yes, and it will allow you to do that. Rest those things that that you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let you do that. That's why I want to bring this first, and then I want you to come back in and share the laws, and if we have time, tie them into the sex ritual act, because that's why I wanted to just explain and show how the laws of attraction tie into sex acts, because whether we know it or not, we are always committing a sex magic ritual. But we have been taught to go downward, to be low in our sex practices. This media, um, through you know, the government and the way they teach us to be and through clothes and through advertisement and makeup and food, you see sex being used even with cars and fruit. And it's always sex there, and you're encouraged to rap music and the way the men talk to us about who we are and who we are not. Everything is encouraged in a very upside-down, lower level of sex magic ritual that binds your soul and it pulls you outside in instead of you going within yourself and projecting from the inside out. It tells you this is how we want you to act. This is how we want you to dress. This is how we want you to fuck. And we basically want you to just be fucking. We don't want you to have powerful sex magic love making rituals that are for the elevation of your consciousness, the man's consciousness, your children, your community, and to raise the vibration and the frequency of Mother Earth. Did you even realize through sex acts we can raise the vibration of the earth and everybody on this planet and the core energy within the earth's crust? Or we can lower the vibration of the earth because everything through sex, like I said in the beginning, moves through energy and inside of the energy is electromagnetic fields and thought forms and they travel. So the best way to make them travel is through fucking, I'm talking about fucking hard and deep, I'm talking about that kind of sex where it's hot, y'all panting, you can't hardly catch your breath or you breathing deep sweat running all there well, come, juice, come, put the juice of lava running every damn well. You finna make some a whole bunch of shit happen then. When that sex is really good and off the chain, that dick is big, thick, good, and juicy, and he know how to work that dick and hit them walls, and you wide open, so your pussy wide open, your juice is flowing, you done let him into your mind. See, that's what I'm saying. When he go into your pussy, he done went into every level of your mind, If you because you gave that man consent. But what I'm trying to say to you is when we get those most hot, deep, juicy, wet, saliva come and pussy juice slanging there, what kind of sex? That's when your spirit actually raises up out of your body. Your chakras and everything open so you are wide open. Your glands, your hypothalamus, your pituitary, your pineal, All of that stuff in your body is vibrating and has shifted, 
at another level. And that is at the point, even when you have an orgasm, that shit is so off the chain and it's so deep. We really have not been taught also what occurs when we have an orgasm. So as a result of all of this mental, emotional, and spiritual shift and geometric prisms that are shifting inside of your womb and inside of your glands and your cells, because we don't know this is going on and we don't know we're doing a ritual, it becomes the reverse. So instead of it becoming a blessing, it becomes a curse. Instead of it becoming constructive, it becomes destructive because so many other forces and thought forms and dynamics are going on here that we do not know how to redirect and control to make it always be a creative process, always be a process that elevates our consciousness because we have no idea that we have all this power within our penis and vagina and in our wombs and that we are supposed to be thinking and redirecting energy in a certain way when we're having sexual intercourse. That's right. Talk about it. That's huge. <laughs> That's why during slavery, that whole process, one of the most important things that they that they controlled was our sexuality. Yes. Think about it, because it's like they controlled it from the beginning to the end, from the day we were born to the day we died. Why? Because they knew the power of that. They tricked us into thinking it was just about uh, producing more babies. No, it was about controlling us by controlling one of the most important aspects of us, our sexuality, which he could never figure out anyway. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to deal with, too. It's like when, when the white folks came over there, the missionaries, what people, a lot of black people don't realize is when them so-called Catholic church and when preachers and evangelists came to Africa and came into our communities and they, you know, still try to come around now and the Mormons and shit me on them bicycles with them damn crash and diamond helmet on their head, knocking on the door trying to give you a damn Bible, they know just bypass my damn house. They don't even knock. I don't want to talk to them. Most of them... We didn't know were CIA and FBI agents, and they were coming to destroy your damn ass. So when you saw them pilgrims coming, when you saw them preachers coming, and you, and you saw them evangelists coming through town, they were not coming to save you. They were going to give you some shit that was going to turn you upside down, and our people did not know that. And, and if you don't believe me, you need to get the book Economic Hitman, or you need to listen to it. On YouTube, that white man breaking that shit down and tell you that whenever white people come, and let me take that back, I didn't say all white people, but the ones that came to oppress and to enslave and to destroy us and our religion and our spirituality and our systems, whenever they come smiling at you and bringing you gifts, you better look out because everybody that they came to is either fucked up or damn extinct. They're not around no more. And then they told our people to do that missionary position shit only. But I'm trying to tell you, black people needs to fuck a certain kind of way to open shit up and to bring certain ancestors and spirits down. So, so you can't get that if that woman laying on her back. You might have to put her on her knee. You might have to put her on top of you. You might have to flip her over. You might have to... Uh, adjust that man a certain kind of way so he can hit them corners in your pussy and hit them down walls and hit the back of it because when in every part of your vagina, just like in the man's penis, there are nerves and nerve endings. And don't you ever forget this here. That's why you need to master your own pussy, know where your G spot at. You need to master that man's dick, know it inside and out in his nuts. And his whole anatomy, know where his prostate at, how to hit all of that. Because, see, that's why a lot of men like to get fucked in the ass. Because they have a dick hitting them in their ass to go directly to that prostate. And it's a thin wall that separates where the prostate is and the uh, intestine. So if a man go up in another man's ass right or go up in a woman right, even though we don't have a prostate, a woman will come harder out of her pussy from being fucked in the ass a lot of time than being fucked in the pussy. So a lot of men like to get fucked in the ass, and they might not even want to be gay or want to get that experience, but they become addicted to the way they shoot off so hard because the dick is hitting them in the back door, hitting them in their rectum, and going directly to the head, bumping up against that prostate, and that's how a man has an ejaculation. So that's why it's so important. Hmm? And also, when we talk about the prostate, uh, real quick, it's two things, especially men should know this. Um, now, finally, they're beginning to talk about it a little bit more in the, in the, in the men's uh, websites and different things like this. But, you know, there's been a, a, a high rise in, the num in, in prostate uh -huh. cancer. Yes. Right? And 
you know, it used to be a joke. The old, older brothers used to say this, and, and younger brothers thought it was a joke. And they say, look, a man needs to have an orgasm yes. at least twice a week 